Hello. So I bought a whole bunch of tasting sets over the holiday season. And so we're going to be continuing to work through them over the next couple of weeks, I guess. Uh, this time it's Talisker, which is a distillery that I used to adore and I've been having some problems with recently. I've done some previous videos. Go watch them. Basically, the problem is the last couple of times I've tried the 10, it's just tasted like you know, they they distilled their Talisker, they threw it in some dead barrels, and then nine and a half years in, they said, oh dear, we need to get some oak on this, and then they threw them into some really aggressively oaky uh, barrels, and then threw them on in the market. I, I, I have not liked uh, the, the Talisker 10s I've enjoyed. Um, but here I'm going to have another crack at it. And also, uh, the other sort of slightly anonymous non-age-stated Talisker's, I've never tried them, so um, this is a good opportunity to do it. So what we have got here, the uh, the current lineup, uh, plus I have, a, I have uh, some, a little something up my sleeve in case things go horribly wrong and I need something to improve my spirits. Okay, uh, so we got. I'm going to start things off with the standard Talisker 10. Bottled at 45.8% alcohol, of course. We're going to pour this. I did have a little tiny nip out of these last night just to kind of get some air into the bottles. Uh, and then I'm going to do the, what is this? The Talisker Storm. Uh, very distinct, that's a lot. Very distinctively named these. And we're going to finish up with the, uh, the, the Talisker Sky. Look at the, Would you be able to tell the difference between these two in the store? Same bottling strength, same, basically the same price, even the same, close to the same price as the 10. The labels are very similar, I, I don't know. Um, but maybe there's something to this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna set that to the side, have a little bit of water. The sense of peaty, fainty uh, uh, sky whiskey are coming up to me, so let's, let's get some tasting notes on the table. All right, starting off with Talisker, 10-year-old uh, single malt scotch whiskey. This is the classic, again, bottled at 45.8% alcohol. I do not think it's that is its natural color, but, you know, move on. On the nose, oh joy. I am not getting that kind of sawdust and ginger thing I was getting on the 10 um, that I tried previously. So already I am extremely happy. Like there's there's no off notes from the wood in this. This smells like something that was matured properly in decent casks. Um, it smells like it smells like good Talisker. Um, so what are we getting here? We're getting peat, but it's it's not like that clean maritime style peat you get in Isla. Uh, this is much more, there's a, there's a slight uh, sea watery, briny character to this, but it's, mu it's just as much about a kind of campfire-y, like backyard campfire character. Like, is, I think like burned twigs and leaves and maybe some like just bits of trash that were lying around in the yard. It's about that as much as it's about the, the maritime stuff. So, you know, twiggy, leafy, bonfire-y peat with a splash of, of seawater. And then there's, there's those fun fusel notes that you always get in Talisker. There's a little bit of like a, a beery thing, like a, a Doppelbach thing. Um, there is... Oh, geez, what is that? There's certainly a graininess to this. It isn't, you know, like, we're not talking like, like space id grainy or anything. No, this is, this is a much more austere kind of graininess. There's a little bit of like um, a wet dog going on in here. A little hint of my beloved uh, Northern Rhone Syrah in that regard. Certainly some vanilla. I'm guessing all of this was ex-American oak. 
Not to say bourbon barrel, because these could have just been, you know, recharred, rejuvenated Frankenstein casks and not, you know, straight up ex-bourbon. A little bit of, um, uh, not mustard seed. This is more like, like straight up Dijon mustard. There's that little bit of like a, uh, like a vinegary hint in there, along with the mustard seed. Yeah, the main thing I'm getting is, is that the kind of leafy twiggy thing along with that kind of funky graininess. I don't know. Maybe, um, like I said, I did try to get some air into these last night, but maybe these could this could use more time or a splash of water. We shall see. On the palate. Hell yes. Okay. So that is the big headline for me. Talisker 10 is back in business. This is proper, proper Talisker. It's, it, it's not quite up there with, with um, you know, what I had maybe 12 years ago, but this is real good. Uh, I would take this in a minute over, what's some other stuff at 60 bucks? Like, I would take this over um, Wee Beastie, certainly, certainly over Laphroaig 10 in, in its current state. This is good. Okay, let me get some notes on the table. Um, so again, this is very, there's that, that hint of sea breeze, but it's much more about like twigs and leaves and, and like mud and dirt and like trash that has been caught on fire and just some blocks of peat that happen to be in there, in the, in the bonfire to give it that character. That's, that's kind of the, where the smoky peatiness of this is, is doing. It is not a nice, clean peat. This is, you know, ugly bonfire trash fire peat. Mm. And I'm all here for it. Yeah, lots of well, lots of woody notes. There's some stewed, uh, like well, not not even stewed tea, like just straight up sweet tea going on. Vanilla, most definitely. Um, even some like like just cafe latte notes going on. Usually I'll just do something creative like a cortado, but no, it's just this is just a latte, nice latte that you paid like six bucks for, um, in a nice cafe. Um, the the beery note I was getting on the nose is there, but it's more subdued. So there's a little hint of Doppelbach, but it's much more folded in on a kind of general graininess, like a kind of porridgey note. Very, very um, peppery as well. I should mention pep. Go back and amend my notes in the nose. There's a lot, there's a fair bit of black pepper in the nose here, uh, uh, but way more on the palate than on the nose. Black Pepper City, again, reminding me of my beloved um, Northern Rhone Syrah, and some kind of wet wool slash wet dog sorts of notes happening on the palate. This is just, this is what I want out of Talisker 10. This is, it does not taste like Isla. It tastes more grungy and like burned and um, kind of just mean-spirited than Isla. And I absolutely adore that. Talisker, of course, one of the, uh, not the only distillery on Sky anymore, but certainly the most famous. And regarded by many whiskey nerds as one of the greatest uh, distilleries in Scotland. And with this being, when the entry level bottling is like that, you can kind of believe, kind of believe it. It's still not, I don't think this is gonna push it in the 90s for me, but this is real good. Um, yeah, uh, there's some kind of uh, paprika notes happening, some like smoky paprika. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with this, this is great. Um, not great but really good. All right, score to water, we'll come back to that. Uh, and uh, let us move on to the ones I haven't really tried before. Uh, Talisker Storm. 
So oh, let's read the back. God help us. So what? another thing that annoys me about, well, really all of these, but particularly these two, is I, I can't find objective information about, not only just about the age, which is evident, but also about what they are doing to this. The Talisker Storm reads, it has a powerful, spicy maritime intensity which comes from casks specifically selected for their expressive character. Um, okay, what kind of casks? Are we Max Bourbon casks? Recharge casks? You know, Guinness casks? What, what are we talking about here? Anyways, it's, it's all very vague and I... I wish I could tell you more, but I can't because they're not telling me more. All right. Um, anyways, let's stick our nose into this. Talisker Storm. Much more closed off on the nose. I'm getting, well, certainly some, some peat. Um, yeah, there's, there's some kind of porridgey graininess, so it's so it peated porridge. Now the twigs and the leaves and stuff, the, the kind of foliage are starting to come through a little bit, that, that campfire character. I'm not getting more, how do I put this? I'm not getting more of like, not necessarily more woody notes um, on this storm than I was on the 10, but what the 10 has that this does, it, the 10 is throwing a lot of vanilla notes at me this is more throwing just kind of ashy notes, like 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 charry notes at me. So it still smells woody, but in a different way. It's more like like burned wood than like just you know kind of standard American vanilla, um, American white oak vanilla sorts of notes. I don't know. I'm not getting a whole lot of this nose. It's a little. It's just not talking to me very much. Just a little bit of like um, that that kind of Dijon mustard thing I was I was talking about before. A little bit of that of the the um, few style notes you tend to get with Talisker, but it's very subdued. Even even the peat is not as loud as in the previous glass. All right, let's see what happens with this in the palate. So, so first of all, I can see what they mean about the spiciness. Um, there's a lot. There was a, t a, a good amount of, of black pepper on the 10. This is throwing way more black pepperiness at me. It's just like you bought like an entire Trader Joe's thing of black pepper and just unscrewed the top grinder part and just unloaded the, the raw peppers into your mouth. That's kind of what this is tasting like. It's there, but it's very it's it's subdued compared to the ten, which I was not expecting. I was expecting this to be this in the sky to be kind of big, obnoxious peat monsters, and it really isn't. Um, it's very peppery. It's very uh, it's got that paprika thing. It's got a little bit of the Dijon mustard thing. Um, not not really the the porridge thing is there. Not really the beery thing, or at least it's turned down. It's more like a Vienna lager than a Doppelbach. Yeah, the wood is, is, I'm not getting a whole lot of vanilla notes. I'm getting a fair amount of kind of, uh, kind of vague, sweet, brown sugary notes. I, I hate using brown sugar as a note because it's, it, in bourbon, in uh, whiskey reviews, it's just a cheat. I mean, it always tastes like brown sugar, right? But here it is. It did, really is like you just grabbed a bag of Domino brown sugar and had some had some tasting of it. A little, like cheap Lipton's tea going on. It's definitely delivering more pepperiness than than the ten, but. Beyond that, it, so a lot of a lot of the things I liked 
are kind of turned down. Um, the peat is definitely turned down. And on the whole, it doesn't feel like as balanced and as as much as a kind of as as orchestrated as the ten is, and that is a little bit disappointing. It's not bad. I could I could definitely fin I will definitely finish this glass. Put it that way. But um, yeah, I don't think it's going to win over the ten in this in this lineup. Not unless something um, extraordinary happens. But we'll, we'll see. Squirt of water, water, and we shall come back to it. All right. Uh, third up is what is this? Um, Talisker Sky. Talisker Sky, which looks exactly like the storm, uh, and is it, it is presented exactly like the storm. Forty five point eight percent, and this is supposed to be Talisker Sky has a smoky sweetness with maritime notes and a spicy edge. Wasn't the other one supposed to be spicy? Uh, which together give it a rugged beauty to match this island home. Um, whatever. Okay, let's let's uh, stick our nose into this. It's a darker color. I don't know if you can see, but to my eye, it looks a little bit darker. Come on. If the if the peat was subdued on the storm, it's even more subdued on this one. It's there, but you really have to have to kind of look for it. Really, I'm I'm getting kind of, you know, porgy orchard fruitiness uh, more than anything else. Um, so yeah, take a take a bowl of porridge, cut up like a quince next to it. I'm really enjoying using quince as a note, by the way, because it's just I've actually I've actually like cooked a few since I I tried my my quince eau de vie and. Yeah, it shows up all over the place, especially in, in malts. Go go get yourself a quince. Um, some uh, s like stewed black tea notes coming through. English breakfast tea. I'm well. I haven't tried on the ta on the palate yet, but this isn't saying Talisker to me a whole lot on first contact. The peat is just way in the back there. It's 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 um, there's a kind of campfireiness that the the maritime character is certainly there. That splash of brine um, and the leaves and the twigs and that and that kind of stuff. The mud, slightly that slight fainty character. But yeah, I'm just it. It doesn't scream Talisker to me. This is, you know, it reminds me more of like Highland Park or something, like a really grungy Highland Park. I don't know, man. Um, let's try this on the palate. Of this poor thing. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, again, uh, even more wood on this on the palette than on this on the storm. More, way more black pepper, char, kind of burned barrel notes. The peat is more apparent on the palette, but it's still just it's turned down a lot. You know what? Okay, let me try this one more time. Before I pronounce, before I say any any really bad things about it, hold on. Yeah, kind of a porgy beeriness, but it's all smothered over by this aggressive peppery woodiness, which is not again not bringing vanilla. It's just kind of bringing, yeah, pe pepper and kind of st stewed tea tannins. Uh, this kind of reminds me of. Of um, God, God, God help me! It, it, this kind of reminds me of Lefroy Select. It isn't, it isn't that bad, 
it is not that bad, but it's it's it feels like kind of the same thought. It's well, what's saving this is is the is the presentation. The bottling strength is still classic forty five point eight Talisker weird strength. That's not fair. That's not fair. It's not as obnoxious as a Lefroig Select. It hasn't been smothered with, you know, you know, really aggressive, like, virgin oak with, like, uh, almost sawdusty, you know, uh, uh, piles of vanilla. This is, but w what they've done here is, I, I'm guessing, just a ton of rechard casks. Um, but it's still kind of the same thought of a bunch of marketers coming in and being like, hey, we've done some research and there are a bunch of uh, of malt drinkers out there who do not like peat, so we maybe we should make an unpeated talisker or a less peaty talisker. And the talisker people saying, "But we make peated whiskey. That's what we do." And the market is saying, "We'll work on it. We'll figure something out." This this kind of is is fitting into that genre. And I was gonna say I don't hate it. Uh, that's wrong. I do hate it. I do hate it, but it isn't terrible. I it's just kind of. The balance problems that were suggesting themselves with the storm are kind of worse here. Um, because it's really mostly about the pepperiness and the kind of barrel char and the beauty of and the the austere beauty of Talisker is kind of being lost in this. I'm still getting there's still some some fun weird things so that that kind of wet wool note that's that's there that's happening but yeah definitely not my favorite all right yeah but we, so we've gone downhill here the, the 10 which i was the one worst i was most worried about turns out to be really good and these other two are yeah really not my favorite so i'm gonna pull pull my parachute we're gonna do a fourth glass Emergency, emergency Talisker to save me from uh, the disappointment that is the sky and to some extent the storm. This is the special release from 2021. Talisker, eight year old. Um, bottled at 59.7%. I have no idea what they did to this. Oh my. Although, from the color, <laughs> I'm guessing this did not get a, get like a port finish or anything. Jesus. That's, that's, yeah, that is, that is a Talisker Reposado there. 59.7%. Uh, practically no information on this. Um, but I happen to have the sample lying around, so we're going to try it. Ooh. Okay. Um, the nose on this is extremely raw. I mean, it's, I, f I feel like I'm nosing pool water that's had a bunch of twigs dumped into it. That's kind of what the, that's kind of what this smells like. But nice. Um, fresh sneakers. Um, uh, sea salt. The, yeah. Um, it, it feels like these people tried the, uh, the most le recent Lefroy Carjas, the, um, the warehouse one one and and thought okay we can make that even more you know austere and raw and that's kind of what's going on here um a lot of okay some the wet the wet wool thing is coming through now you know stinky wet dog but nice um fusel notes heavy i don't know like like hot metal like an old car sitting in the sun and the peat is there but it's it's kind of being um, subdued by a lot of the other stuff going on I mean it smells very young and raw which is normally not a problem for me I'm, I'm kind of into that so let's uh, let's give the shot on the palate Cool. 
Oh, that's awesome. It is absolutely Talisker Reposado, and I love it. I love this. Um, the overt PD character, again, is kind of restrained. What we're getting here is just tons of, yeah, like pool water, twigs, leaves, bonfire, uh, burned trash, mud. Like a soggy, wet dog is running all over the place. Not like a young dog. This is like a like a old fourteen year old, you know, with a big wet coat. And assume that the the, the 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 party's by the seaside. That's that's kind of the the vibe I'm getting here. And again, people are throwing peat uh, peat blocks into the fire along with anything else they can get a hold of. I could repeat a lot of the notes I, I was getting from the 10. Um, the Doppelbach thing, uh, the Quince thing, um, the Dijon mustard thing, uh, but also the, the smoky paprika thing. Um, all that's kind of in play here. And actually more vanilla than the previous two. Uh, I would guess this is probably fresher uh, bourbon, uh, uh, American oak barrels, or whatever it is, than the previous two. God, that's good. It's a very, very simple, basic whiskey, and it, 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 the, the strength of the distillate makes it work. It just does. Um, I mean, the, the strength of the distillate is making all of this work, even the the sky, which I in, which I hate in the heart of my soul. Not as much as I hate Laphroaig Select, but I don't like it. Two, three, four. I probably need five, but we'll see. It needs five. All right. All right, preliminary results. This is winning. <laughs> the eight-year-old is winning by a fair bit. Then the 10, then the storm, then the sky. But you know, water can change a lot of things. We shall see. <clears throat> All right, back to the standard 10-year-old. Okay, so water has brought out a lovely kind of uh, stewed afternoon tea sort of note. You know, you're, you're taking your tea with, with two lumps rather than one because it's, um, it's your day off. And you're letting yourself relax a little bit. Otherwise, it smells pretty much the same, which is to say it's a really good nose. It's a balanced nose with lots of different little things going on the peat but also the the bonfireiness the slightly herbaceous weird grainy notes uh from the distillate the oak the vanilla Um, so there's the pepperiness that was happening more so on the, on the middle two actually steps up a little bit with the 10, but there's just so much more going on. The peat is more in play. The beeriness is more in play. Um, the poriginess is more in play. It just, everything is popping that little bit more. Um, it's, it's, this is just a really good whiskey. I'm going to give this. 88 out of 100. It's nice. I really, really like this version of Talisker 10, and my faith in the brand is restored. All right, moving on to the uh, the storm. 
still very subdued on the nose. This was not talking before, and it's not really talking to me now. Some kind of vague woody pepperiness. It's actually kind of uh, kind of pulled itself back even more with water, which is not what I want on the palate. Mm -mm. Especially up to the 10, which doesn't just get more peppery, it gets more kind of full on the palate. Um, after that, this is this is nowhere. Um, it feels thin. The finish is very. I mean, it kind of holds in the mouth for a reasonable amount of time, but it's it's stopping short in my in my mouth. It's kind of stopping in my molars and not going any further back. Um, it's very ashy. It's very peppery. It's, on the palate at least, it's recognizable as Talisker. Um, but it's a pretty darn basic Talisker, to be honest. So I'm going to give this 84 out of 100. 84 for Talisker Storm. Not bad, but if you need a... P uh, no, I was going to say, if you needed a, P a PD Whiskey... It'll do, but it's it's like 60 bucks, and Jesus, just buy the Talisker 10. Buy the Talisker 10, especially if it's performing like this. Um, oh, God. It's time to go back to the Talisker Sky, which just felt like a Talisker made for people who don't like Talisker. And I don't see the point, but... Um, yeah, it's, it smells very... Uh, kind of sweet tea and nice on the on the nose. It's kind of a vague, pleasant, um, like summer, fall, uh, yeah, fall campfirey goodness. A couple of rocks in there to make things fun, but yeah, it's it's this. Yeah, on the nose, I'm not calling this Talisker. Um, I'm suspecting maybe like um, lightly peated Tobermory, maybe, oh, Jesus, um, Highland Park again, like funky Highland Park on the palate. Even shorter in the mouth. Jesus, that just disappears. Oh, it's just, it's just gone. Like, I put it in my mouth expecting a nice, you know, ashy, twiggy goodness to hang around for a while, in the, at least in the front. And But no, it's just gone. Um, it doesn't go back past my molars, and it disappears after a couple seconds, uh, you know, in no time. Flavor-wise, the peat... It's barely there. It a uh, little beeriness, a little porginess, a lot of kind of vague, kind of oaky, ashy, sweetie stuff, like sweet tea. It just. It, it kind of tastes like Talisker you're supposed to throw back and, you know, um, and that's just not Talisker. Um, that's not got that kind of distillery. I hate this in the heart of my soul. I can't give it that bad a score because the distill is so pretty solid, but... Jesus, it really does just disappear. Um, I'm going to... I'm not going to totally sink this. I'm going to give this... No, not 81. It's just going to get a straight 80. Because I, I give myself leave to, you know, lower things a point 
if I just really don't like them. Um, 80 points for Talisker Sky. Nope. Um, and then my uh, bonus to myself for deigning to review that, the eight-year-old special release, now with a little bit of water in it. Yeah, it still has that kind of weird pool water thing going on. And I'm down for it, I, to be honest. I'm, I'm down for this. You know, like smoky quince smothered in mud and leaves is kind of kind of what I'm getting. Plus the, the new sneakers thing. It's there. But this is not, at least my suspicion is this is not really a nosing whiskey. This is a palate whiskey. So let's see what happens on the palate. With water, definitely peppers up, gets more full, but I think it loses a little bit of complexity, actually. Um, yeah, the, the pepperiness kind of overwhelms everything else. It's still magnificent. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the funky, porridgey, grainy fruit is singing... It's just a glorious talisker. But I liked it better neat. It loses a little something. It loses some some complexity, some character. Um, so I'm going to give this a 90 minus. And um, I don't know who's calling me. Um, and um, yeah, so so very good. Pushing on greatness. But yeah, it's, it's one I, I, I don't think it swims well. I would drink that neat. So, uh, thanks for watching. In my mind, Talisker was redeemed. Just don't buy these two. Especially do not buy the Talisker Sky. Buy the 10. Um, buy the special release. I don't even know what 2022 is. Um, 88 for Talisker 10. Very recommended, in this form at least. 84 for the Storm. 80 for the Sky. And... You know, it should. I should really make a do do like eighty plus an anger face. Yeah, a, a eighty plus an anger emoji, and uh, to the for the uh, special release from twenty twenty one ninety minus. Thanks for watching and cheers.